Hello, hello, welcome on back to another uh, tutorial for Galactic Science. This one is involving the advanced generators and a tree farm, um, as well as a few other components to create um, an infinite amount of power. <clears throat> Over time, I accidentally hit the wrong button. Uh, yeah, so this is the setup itself. We got a tree farm. This is a 9x9 nine nine area. Uh, I am using birch saplings for a very specific reason. Uh, the oak wood drops apples and then you'd have to deal with those. I'm avoiding that and the spruce trees um, get way too big. They end up causing a lot of darkness around the area and depending on the way they can spawn can cause some mobs to spawn as well and that makes the area unsafe. Um, I am using a diamond chopper. You can use whatever one you want. However, the diamond chopper is the fastest of all choppers. The choppers um, actually are the ones that dictate the speed and not the axe themselves. Uh, at least through my testing, I have discovered that. The yeah, so the the, the spruce saplings um, can also yeah since they grow so big because of the two by two. I'm um, going back to that for a moment. Uh, and then the mobs get spawned. The axes for them, the wooden axes, end up getting <clears throat> used up really, really fast before the tree can actually be cut down completely. So you can have pockets of space in there that ends up getting dark and mobs will spawn. Um, along with down here, like this overhang here, um, in certain conditions this could be completely dark and mobs can spawn around here. I am trying to avoid that. I'm also trying to avoid getting items that we don't want. Um, I'm also avoiding jungle saplings for the same reason of the darkness and whatnot. I, I chose birch because it seems to be the best and uh, most people don't use it for anything else either. Um, <clears throat> so down below we have some relo relocator pipes with a multi-module in it. Uh, at the bottom of the diamond chopper with a module extraction. You can see this in the top middle portion by the way, part of Waylo. Uh, the module extraction is just set to max stack size 64, it's always active, and the uh, timer is default. It, it's just kind of put in there. There's also a module stock there with a wooden axe, times one, 64 uh, birch wood, and one other thing that I forgot to do with this is to keep a stock of 64. Okay, well it seems to be slightly bugged right now. Uh, that is one issue with the multi-module, by the way, they do get bugged on occasion. Uh, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, but the bird sapling is supposed to be X64. Um, granted, I don't have those being stored anywhere over here. Uh, this is supposed to be self-efficient, and it is on its own. Uh, but if you were to tie this into another system that kept uh, inventory storage, you could have it set up to be stocked always up with 64 wood and saplings in the event of that not enough drop or what have you. Uh, but yeah, I have the relocator pipe running from there all the way underneath the tree farm and then up into a crafter tier 2. This crafter is set up to create uh, birch wood planks, sticks, and the wooden axe. The birch wood planks um, you will want to set to keep an int for internal. Same goes for the sticks, and then for wooden axes, I have it marked as keep and external. The uh, external, by the way, is the default value. Um, they will put the axes out here, and uh, the module extraction on this relocator pipe will pull them out when they, the diamond chopper requests them. Uh, this will also allow items to come in, like the birch wood that this requires. Uh, it will also keep one of each in here so it doesn't ever not have those spaces for it. I also recommend using cobblestone as a filler so you don't have a 90,000 sticks in here or 90,000 wood planks or some combination thereof. You can use any kind of filler block if you so desire. I just happen to use uh, cobblestone in this. Now the chemical decomposer we have here uh, is up one more pipe from the pipe that goes into the crafter tier 2. Uh, the reason for this is so the items see this first and then the second, guaranteed. Uh, at the bottom of this chemical decomposer we have a module sneaky. Uh, the reason for this is the decomposers take items from the top in order to decompose them and output from the bottom. Uh, but because of our pipe setup, we need a module sneaky, the input up to the top. 
so that's what I did here. I changed the uh, side that it goes into to up, um, and then I'll put the items in there. On the opposite side of the uh, Tomoko Decomposer, we have a barrel with an extractor at the bottom. This barrel will be storing cellulose for us, as well as an item import port from Advanced Generators. Uh, below this we have a transfer node liquids. I happen to have eight world interaction upgrades since this can hold up to eight uh, buckets of water at one time. This will give us eight buckets of water per uh, action. You can get away with one, but in heavy loads that may not be enough. <clears throat> uh, off of this chemical decomposer though we have a, another relocator pipe um, as well as a module sneaky extraction. The sneaky extraction is like the extraction module uh, but this also combines the sneaky effect. So we are actually pulling items from the down because that's where these items are output normally um, and then from there they'll go to the barrel and the item import port. Uh, by the way the transfer node liquids here they do appear to be connected to the relocator pipes but the water will not go into them at all. Um, on this side we have some aluminum wire. I'm using the regular aluminum wire from Galacticraft and I'm running this on over into a flux generator uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. So the Send gas producer controller in this particular case that we're using uh, produces something called send gas. It is used to combine water and carbon um, while the water gets turned into steam. Steam into carbon into a synthetic gas and then that is what is used to fuel this gas turbine over there. Uh, in order to do so we need mixing chambers and heating chambers. Uh, five mixing chambers per heating chamber is the recommended, not just by me, but by the actual mod authors themselves. You can have more heating chambers, but you lose uh, efficiency over long periods of time. And since this is supposed to be 100% efficient in terms of uh, providing itself with power and whatnot, this is uh, what I went with. So we have the item import, uh, item input port and the fluid intake valve behind the send gas producer controller. The fluid intake valve is what's taken in the water. This item input port will be taken in the cellulose, which will be our carbon value. And of course the water will be turned into steam. Um, I have a five wide mixing chamber here on the bottom layer here and one block behind it. Same goes for the next layer up. And on this top layer I have five mixing chambers in the back here and then the five hitting chambers in the front just to give a bit of uh, variant in texture in the front since this is what most people will see. Uh, on the far right here we have a fluid output valve connected to a transfer node liquids. There is no upgrades in this. You can uh, add a uh, speed upgrade if you so desire, but I do not feel it is necessary once this thing is filled up. Now this is the gas turbine controller. This is what is actually going to be producing the power. Uh, down below it I have a fluid intake valve to take the syn gas from this system in. The gas turbine controller is necessary as well to actually create this machine. Uh, this is what gives us the interface here. On the left here we'll have the syn gas input and then on the right here we're going to have the RF and you can see some information about how many connected turbines there are and what connected turbines there are. The peak production value of those turbines, in this case it's 10,000 RF per tick. Uh, the amount of uh, syn gas that is going to be consumed per tick in order to generate said power the current production of RF per tick and uh, the fuel consumption which is not I believe marked on this. Um, the gas turbine controller can be used for another system as well but it's not part of this video. Uh, next to this gas turbine controller I have a 5 deep by 2 high basic power capacitors. These are from Jan's advanced generators. That is what's giving this internal storage of 10,100,000 RF. These blocks can be left out if you so desire. Behind the gas turbine controller and the fluid intake valve, we have a fuel air, air mixer. Now, I highly recommend making this and actually attaching it because it, uh, it decreases the amount of sink gas used to generate the same amount of power uh, by 35%. And it is fairly cheap to make. As you can see, you got iron frames, pistons, iron bars, iron tubing, and pressure valve, uh, which is just more iron. Uh, so if you have quite a bit of iron, go ahead and make that. 
Uh, above that, I have a gas mix uh, compressor. This is a bit more expensive, but it increases the efficiency to 185%, as you can see. Uh, the reason this is a bit more expensive isn't because of the iron usage, as you can see here, but rather these advanced pressure valves. The only way to make these are through the alloy smelter with eight vibrant alloys and a regular pressure valve, uh, which we've seen before. So this is the expensive bit. This means you have had to have gone to Mars at least once at some point in time and have made an alloy smelter which requires dash for the machine frame. So it is a bit more expensive to get and not exactly the quickest. Uh, two blocks behind that we have the flux generator. This is what's actually going to take the power from this uh, gas turbine system and actually output it to another location. I have the wire running from this all the way over to the chemical decomposer and the crafter so it provides power. Now on the right hand side of these basic power capacitors we have a 5x5 five five grid, two stacks high, so the bottom layer and top layer, of uh, turbines. In this case I'm particularly using steel turbines, um, which will produce in total 10,000 RF when you have 50 of these. You can go ahead and do the math of 200 RF per tick if you so desire of each turbine. There are other types of turbines. Uh, and the vibrant ones are the best that can produce up to 100, uh, 500 RF per tick but requires a bit more uh, synthetic gas to actually get going. Uh, the gold bladed ones can produce a bit less than the steel ones um, and also require more uh, power to actually get going. The iron ones can produce 100 RF per tick at uh, regular power uh, similar to the steel ones but the steel ones double the amount of RF that is produced and as far as I'm aware, those are all of the turbines available in this mod pack. Uh, the vibrant turbines are the best. You can actually get um, 25,000 RF per tick, uh, if I'm doing the math correctly in my head right this second. Uh, but you will run out of syngas if you don't have a tree farm that is actually producing it fast enough. So yeah, uh, tw the system here, by the way, can only hold up to 50 turbines. If you try to adding any more to it, you'll get blocks that look like this, and uh, they will not be attached to the gas turbine controller. You can only have up to 50, and you can also only have up to 10 basic power capacitors, um, as well as these uh, fuel air mixers and gas mix compressors. You can only have one. Uh, as far as I'm aware, you can have up to three or five of those flux generators, and you can also have some fluid output valves and whatnot on this if you so desire. Same goes for this. You can have more than one um, of these if you so desire, uh, just depending on your particular setup. Now, you may notice that this system is not entirely running properly um, because there's no power actually being produced. Uh, the reason for this is because we actually need to seed the power system. Uh, so this system is completely set up, but because this has no carbon to actually input to heat the system up and turn the water into steam and they combine it with the carbon in order to create the send gas, this will never work. What you need to do after you have the tree farm going is come into it or into the chemical decomposer, grab some of the wood, and if you so desire you can craft these into planks or sticks or whatever, but I'm just going to put the wood in there and that will create enough of the carbon in there to get the system going. It will heat up and once it hits 150 uh, HU out of the 250 it will start turning the water into steam. And once that is happening we'll be turning that uh, steam and carbon into syngas which is going to be put into this which is going to be creating that uh, 10,000 RF per tick in this particular case. As you can see, we already have 1,000 millibuckets of sand gas in here, and this is taking 5.5 millibuckets per tick. And that is because we have both the fuel air mixer and the gas mix compressor. Uh, if we were to take that away, we can see that the consumption, uh, you can see up in the middle here of Vuelo, uh, the consumption is going up to 7.5, and if we were to remove that itself, uh, the consumption should go up to 9.1. It is highly recommended to at least have the fuel air mixer because the uh, millibucket ticks get really, really reduced. So yeah, this is now creating power. It'll be self-sustaining. This should have full power along with this. Uh, this will constantly resupply the uh, the tree chopper, 
with axes um, over time when it needs it. Uh, by the way, I do recommend changing this extraction on the crafter to a higher number than the one second or uh, uh, the, the 10 takes half second between ex each extraction. Otherwise, you can cause a backup in the system. Um, I particularly have mine set up to five seconds. You will have to do some testing to see uh, what exactly works for you. Uh, for this barrel, barrel up here for the uh, cellulose, what I recommend also doing for that is upgrading it and adding a void upgrade to it. Uh, this system will run infinitely on its own. However, uh, in the event this system gets clogged up here in the chemical decomposer because this barrel is full and this system is full and you, it's not producing any power, this will keep trying to run over and over again um, and eventually the items will get stuck here and it will fail to actually uh, resolve itself because the items will get stuck here, this won't have anywhere to go. Uh, this will try to send out axes to this, this is trying to pump out more items and depending on how the system gets backed up this could be blocked off which means once this is broken uh, down that the axes can no longer go in here meaning the system gets uh, kind of stuck on its own. Uh, so I do recommend putting a few upgrades and that is the wood and iron upgrades in this barrel as well as a void upgrade uh, to prevent that issue because this will allow this chemical decomposer to constantly run and it does not matter because the system will constantly produce power for it and then put the uh, cellulose in here whenever this doesn't need it and will constantly get rid of it if it needs to. There is one thing I had forgotten about uh, to put in before I had initially recorded this uh, tutorial video. Um, at the bottom of the relocator, just below the sneaky, I forgot to put a module filter. Uh, the filter is then set to whitelist, which is default, and the filter will be asterisk, birch, asterisk, um, so it's matching all birch-based items. The uh, issue without having this is all of the wooden axes will go into the chemical decomposer because they can be decomposed into cellulose um, instead of going off into the diamond chopper. Uh, there is another issue with this system that can happen on rare occasions. Uh, when this system needs wood, it can get stuck into the module extraction pipe here, and uh, this will prevent the access from coming out, so please do be aware of that. Um, one way to avoid that would be to have a barrel or something down below, uh, say right here or so and another one here for the saplings and then have them both uh, set up to have the wood and saplings uh, respectively and put two more module extractions here um, just to prevent that kind of issue from happening that way they always have a place to go uh, again you can use a void upgrade if you so desire but you might want to hold off on that particular thing in this case uh, it is just a temporary storage location you can also use a diamond chest or some sort of chest as a temporary storage location uh, if you feel it necessary. Uh, you can also put one up here uh, past the filter as well if you feel that is also desired. Um, but let's take a look at some of these crafting recipes here. Uh, for the advanced generators. The other items are fairly simple to craft but uh, some of these other ones uh, not so much. So for the Syndgas producer controller, you will need some redstone, iron, and a stick. You get 16 redstone iron wiring in this format. You'll need one for the Syndgas producer controller. You also need four item, uh, not item frames, iron frames, uh, which is crafted from four iron ingots, and you get two. So you'll need eight iron ingots for this alone, uh, just for the uh, iron frames. A pressure valve, which is made from some of the iron tubing and iron ingots. The uh, iron tubing, which you also need for the Syngas producer controller, is crafted like so, with two iron ingots and a stick, and you get 16 of those. You will also need a control circuit, which uh, apparently they've modified since I last looked at this, where it requires dash ingots, four redstone, and a nether quartz. Um, let's see, what else do they need? Nope, that is everything for that. For the mixing chamber, you will need uh, two pressure valves. 
uh, which requires iron tubing and the iron ingots as we mentioned. Um, some iron frames and some iron tubing again for that and you'll want to craft five of those. Uh, sorry, not five of those, 25 of those. The heating chambers, you will want a pressure valve, iron tubings, and iron frames. Uh, and you'll want five of these, not 25. Had those numbers backwards in my head. For the fluid output valve, you'll want some iron frames, a couple iron ingots, and a couple of iron tubing. Uh, that will give you one fluid output valve. For the fluid intake valve, it is similar. You need three iron ingots, two iron frames, and some iron tubing. Uh, essentially, this setup takes a lot of iron to create in its entirety as well as the iron diamonds etc for that oh um speaking of this thing it has been upgraded with the, the diamond upgrades from progressive automation uh you need 40 of them in order to get to a range of 81 which is 9 by 9 plus one extra space uh for these basic power supply uh power capacitors and the steel turbines uh you'll need basic capacitors from Ender I.O., iron frames, and redstone iron wiring. Uh, the basic capacitors are cut from a bit of gold, nuggets, and some redstone as well as a copper ingot. The steel turbines will require a steel turbine rotor, some iron tubing, iron frames, and redstone iron wiring. The rotor is crafted from steel turbine blades and a steel ingot for the steel turbine rotor. Uh, this recipe is similar to all of the other rotors, by the way. Uh, it just uses different materials for the blades, but the recipe is identical. Uh, so for the iron one, you would need iron turbine blades and an iron ingot in the center instead. The steel turbine blades, you get four each, so you need to craft this twice per, uh, per turbine rotor. You need a f set of five steel ingots for the steel turbine blades, and you'll need ten to get one rotor. Uh, just for the blades at least. You'll need an additional steel ingot to craft one of these rotors and then from there you'll be able to craft the steel turbines. The da -da -da, flux generator is a power IO module, four redstone dust, a gold ingot, and two iron frames as well as a redstone iron wiring. Uh, the power IO module is two pistons, a piece of redstone, and six iron ingots. Like so. For the gas turbine controller, you will need a, another control circuit, which requires again the dash in this particular version. Um, in previous versions of this pack, by the way, this did not require dash, and uh, you could craft them earlier on. Uh, the version I'm currently in for this pack is 1415, if I am not mistaken. And of course, you need some redstone dust and nether quartz. And similar to the uh, sin gas producer, uh, you need the iron frames, redstone iron wiring, and iron tubings. Uh, for the flu fuel air mixer, you will need a pressure valve, iron tubing, a couple more pistons, an iron bar, and four iron frames. Um, I believe that is everything for the advanced generators mod. For the aluminum wire, if you want to know the recipe for this, you need some wool and some aluminum ingots and you get six wire per. Uh, I'm not exactly sure on the total number of wire you need here. Uh, just count it, it looks like nine, so you need to craft it twice just for that little bit of wiring. For the de chemical decomposer, if you do not have one to spare already or do not wish to use one that you are given from a quest, you will need the atomic manipulator, some iron ingots, and a piece of redstone. The atomic manipulator is a block of iron and eight pistons surrounding it. These relocator pipes require some glass panes and iron ingots, and you get four relocator pipes each. Uh, for the modules, you will need these module bases, which require iron ingots and iron bars. Uh, from there you need gold for the filter, blocks of redstone for the extraction, and lapis for the sneaky, uh, enderpearls for the module stock, and a couple diamonds and a couple of gold ingots for the multi-module. For the diamond chopper you will need 
the iron chopper, which requires the stone chopper, which requires the wooden chopper, which is six wood logs, a chest, a furnace, and a wooden axe. From there you'll need um, seven stone, the wooden chopper, and a stone axe, then six iron ingots, a block of iron, the stone chopper, and an iron axe, and then seven diamonds, the iron chopper, and a diamond axe. Uh, for the upgrades themselves, you will need the previous tier as well. Uh, so for each diamond upgrade, you need the iron upgrade, which requires a stone upgrade, which requires the wooden. The wooden upgrades are eight logs surrounded by a piece of redstone. Uh, then for the stone upgrades, you need the wooden upgrade and eight stone and then six iron ingots and a stone upgrade as if you were making a rail. Uh, and then from there you need two diamonds and an iron upgrade to make a diamond upgrade. Um, I believe that is everything for this system. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's everything for the system. Uh, again, do keep in mind that uh, when I initially created the system that the recipes were the same gas producer controller and the gas turbine controller were a bit cheaper. Uh, it was modified more recently, so if you're using an older version of the pack, you should be able to make this fairly quickly and before you even get to Mars. If you're using it in the latest version of the pack, uh, you will have to have gone to Mars in order to create this system at all. Uh, for the transfer node liquids, which you'll need two of, You'll need either a block of redstone or an ender pearl, a bucket, two iron ingots, two lapis, and some sort of pipe. I recommend the, uh, when it comes over, transfer pipe, which is six stone slabs, two pieces of glass, and some redstone. Uh, for the road interaction upgrades, you'll need a iron pickaxe, four iron ingots, and four lapis per one. And I believe, yeah, okay, that, that, that is definitely all of the recipes that I can think of at the moment. Um, if you don't know any recipes, or if I miss something, feel free to use NEI to look them up. Uh, but yeah, th this is that system, and it will continually creating power from this one tree farm, and uh, a bit of water is uh, where its inputs actually come from. Uh, but yeah, feel free to upgrade, downgrade, change the, how this looks to your liking. This is just the way I prefer to make it look uh, after doing some testing with these advanced generators. Um, and what have you. But that'll be it for this tutorial video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, remember to leave a like and uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos. I'm trying to remember my normal outro at the moment. Uh, but yeah, subscribe to the channel for more videos uh, for gaming in general. I do a lot of LPs and I do quite a bit of tutorials here and there. Uh, but yeah, that'll be it. Until next time, take it easy.